Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the OBD Link MX Plus to do some data logging. We're going to be doing this on a 2014 Ford Explorer. And the purpose of our data log today will be to figure out if our mass airflow sensor is working properly and if the other parts of our fuel control system are working. So we'll, so we'll be looking at uh, short and long-term fuel trims. We'll be looking at O2 sensor or Lambda data and just getting an overall picture of how fuel calculation, fuel delivery, how the feedback is working, and it'll be in a very concise and quick test. So let's get our OBD link hooked up to the vehicle and then I'll show you what to do next. So in a previous video, I showed you how to set up the app so that you can do data logging with the MX Plus. So go watch that video so you can figure out the settings that you need to make this work properly. Um, we've already got that set up now. So what we've done, we've opened the app, we've got everything plugged in, we've connected our Bluetooth, now at the bottom of the screen here, I'm just gonna click connect. And once we are fully connected, we're ready to start this data log. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back in and make sure I have the PIDs that I need. So I'm gonna click on settings, preferences, logging, select PIDs. And the PIDs we're gonna want for this are short and long-term fuel trim. So it looks like I got short-term fuel trim bank one, long-term fuel trim bank one, we want to do short-term bank two, uh, long-term bank two. We want engine RPM. We want mass airflow rate, which we have. We don't need this intake air temp for this test, so I can take that off. Uh, then we're gonna need O2 sensor bank one, sensor two. If we can get bank one, sensor one, that would be good as well. Let's see if it's down here. Uh, Lambda would be better if this vehicle has a Lambda sensor, so I have the Lambda selected here. And let's see if there's anything else. Nope, that should be everything that we need for this. So once we have that selected, we'll go back to the main screen and we're going to click on logs. Top right, I'm gonna click on menu and I'm gonna do start logging. Okay, so now that we've started the data log, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the RPMs at different ranges for about 10 seconds a piece so that we can see how the fuel control is working in, in the different RPM and load ranges. So we're just gonna let it idle for about 10 seconds, then we're gonna raise it up to about 1,000 RPM for 10 seconds, and then 2,000 RPM for 10 seconds, 3,000 RPM for 10 seconds, 4,000 RPM for 10 seconds, and then we'll go back to idle for 10 seconds, and then we'll stop the data log. Okay, so right now we're sitting at idle, we're gonna hold this for about 10 seconds. Okay, and I'm gonna raise it to 1,000 RPMs, which is kinda of hard to do, but try to stay as steady on the pedal as you can. Okay, 2,000 RPM. Three thousand RPM. Four thousand RPM. And back to idle. It was kind of hard to watch. It's this little digital RPM gauge right here. And I did the best I could. We'll see how that works out. So back here in the app, we're gonna click on menu again, click stop logging. And now you can see that we have this one minute and 53 second file that we want to export to ourselves. And so click on share. Okay, so we emailed the CSV file to ourselves and we have opened it now in Excel. And now we're going to use Excel to make sense of all the data through some graphs and through some, some equations. And that's what makes data logging so good is we're gonna be able to make more sense of the data than what is just given in, in the scan tool itself. And we're gonna be able to look at things over a longer period of time and over multiple load and RPM ranges, which will make it really useful for us. So we're gonna analyze mass airflow, figure out if that's working good. We're gonna look at short and long-term fuel trims, 
Um, and then this ended up having Lambda sensors instead of O2 sensors for the front. And so there were some lines of data that just didn't return anything based on some of the PIDs that we chose. So I just deleted those lines of data that we didn't need. I retitled everything so it was a little bit easier to read across the top. I got rid of a couple lines of data up here where everything was zeroed out for a minute. So that's gone. And I've already set up some of our equations. So this line right here is total fuel trim, which is not a direct PID on the scan tool. So all that is is short and long-term fuel trim for bank one added together so we can get the total. And I did the same thing for bank two. And then I did a lambda total because we have a lambda sensor on both banks. So I did the average of those two here. And then we also did something called mass airflow versus RPM. It's the ratio. So that's here. Um, now that we have that, let's go ahead and graph this. So I'm gonna select all the data here except for the time. I'll show you what I'll do with that in just a second. So control shift down, we'll select everything below it. We're gonna put, we're gonna insert a two dimensional line graph. And then I'm gonna right click on that, select data, and now I'm gonna edit this horizontal because right now the horizontal of our graph is just the cell numbers over here. So I'm gonna edit and that's where we're gonna put the time, control shift down and now we're set. Okay, let's make this a little bit bigger, easier to see. All right, so all of these uh, lines on here that we're graphing are every every one of the different rows from our from our Excel sheet. And they're all set up on the graph as primary axes. And since that's the case, we can only look at one primary at a time. And right now it's RPM. So that's what we're looking at here and that's what's in gray. Everything else is just basically off the chart because it's, it's in a different um, range. So what we're gonna do is click on, I'm gonna double click on one and I'm gonna change it into a secondary axis. And then we're gonna do that for all of the remaining lines. Takes a little bit of time to do this, but once it once you do, it'll be very useful for us. Okay, well, two more it looks like. All right, now that we have that done, we can come in and we can filter and only look at what we want to right here. So the first thing we're gonna do is look at RPM versus the mass airflow. So I show you how that works here. So I'm gonna turn all these others off and then click apply. Now you can see that mass airflow shows up in yellow and they basically follow each other and that's what we wanna see. As RPM is raised up, airflow should increase into the engine, they should be proportional. Now, this is a good way to test it, but there's a better way to tell if it's actually good because it's hard for me to look at this and say, okay, there's a there's a proportional distance that's equal to this proportional distance that's equal to this proportional distance. That's hard. So that's why we did that math equation, mass airflow over RPM. So I'm gonna turn mass airflow off and do that mass airflow over RPM instead. And now what we see is this mostly flat line. Right. Obviously, there's there's bumps and stuff in here, but I'm trying not to pay attention to every little change. What I want to see is overall, if I were to draw like a trend line across this, is it trending straight across or is it trending up or down? And it should be mostly straight across because as RPM goes up, like I said, mass airflow should keep up proportionally with it. So you can actually draw a trend line if you're having trouble seeing that. And I'm gonna do that here, mass airflow versus RPM. And you can see this dotted line shows up on the screen and it's slightly trending upwards, but I think that's just because I wasn't able to control my foot on the pedal as smoothly as I wanted to. Uh, really what I look in here is I don't, I don't wanna see a trend line downwards, right? If I'm trending down, that means every time I increase the RPM that the airflow reads less and less the higher I get and that would mean the mass airflow sensor is bad. So this mass airflow sensor looks fine to me, and if I want to make sure of that, I could go back and try to get a better test done with better control on the RPM. All right, the next thing I want to look at, I'm gonna deselect this one. I'm gonna look at 
the short-term fuel trims for bulk banks. Now, most of the things you read out there will say that as long as you're within plus or minus 10 on your short-term fuel trims, then that's good fuel control. And I would like to see it even better, if possible, plus or minus five. But as we're looking at this, we're there, right? We're not going more than positive three or four on that. And then at times we're lower in the negative 10, but overall we're right within the range that we expect. So this looks really good to me. Now keep in mind also, like I'm revving that engine up. So it's really the points where you're holding it that are the most important. Okay, that looks good. Let's look at long term, see what we have there. And so at the lower RPM when we were idling, and even in the 1000 RPM range, we were negative eight and negative 10. And then as we got into the higher RPMs, then it got closer to zero. So overall, it's at taking away a little bit of fuel, so it might be running slightly rich in the long terms here. But I again, not numbers I think I'm concerned about in any way. If you wanna go and look at the total fuel trim, which is one of the calculations we did, we can see that consistently, like total, we're taking away around negative 10 percent fuel all the time. And so I still think that's acceptable, right? That doesn't point in any direction to me of something that's bad. And there's no codes or anything being thrown on this for that. So, so that looks good. The next thing I want to look at is the Lambda sensors. So you can see what those are. And so both banks right there. Now Lambda is a little bit different than your O2 sensor data. O2s we expect to be switching back and forth, back and forth, and those are the O2s before the CAT. But since we have Lambda sensors, Lambda sensors are wideband sensors, and they are targeting a specific zone all the time. So the target that we're going for, or the baseline, is one, as you can see right here. And if we go below one, that means it's rich, and if we go above one, that means it's lean, and it stays really well on target except for this one spot during the decel, and that's to be expected, right? Because during a decel, all of a sudden we take away the fuel and it runs lean, and that's why we see it shoot up high here, but then it regains control and we're back at one. So those Lambda sensors look really good. So anyways, for this video, we've looked at a few things, right? We looked at mass airflow, we looked at short term, long term, we looked at our uh, Lambda sensors. I'm sure there's more we could see in this. I'm sure there's more math equations that we could add and and do some things in here. And that's what's so great about having this file saved. Um, and I will be making a few more videos later, one with how to calculate volumetric efficiency using data logging and one about uh, fuel economy. But for this video today, I think that's good. If you have any suggestions or anything else that you think I should add or do, please let me know in the comments. But I think that's good for today.